Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and I have the pleasure of welcoming back our most prolific guest on the CUBE in its history, the CMO of Infinidad, Eric Herzog. Eric, it's great to see you, welcome back. Lisa, it's great to be here, love being on the CUBE. I think this might be number 55 or 56. Been doing them a long time with theCUBE. You, you guys have. are great. You have, and we always recognize you lately with the Hawaiian shirts, it's your brand, <laughs> and that's, that's the Eric Herzog brand, we love it, but I like the pin, the Infinite pin, oh, on brand. Thank you. Yeah, oh, gotta be on brand. Exactly. <laughs> so talk about the current IT landscape, so much change we've seen in the last couple of years specifically. What are some of the big challenges that you're talking with enterprise customers and cloud service providers about? What, what, are some of those major things on their minds? So there's a couple things. First of all is obviously with the rocky economy and even before COVID, just for storage in particular, CIOs hate storage. I've been doing this now since 1986. I have never, ever, ever met a CIO at any company I've been with and I've been with four of the biggest storage companies on this planet. Never met a CIO who used to be a storage guy. So they know they need it, but boy, they really don't like it. So the storage admins have to manage more and more storage, exabytes, exabytes, it just, ballooning for what a storage admin has to do. Then you then have the COVID, and is it recession? No, is it a growth? And then clearly what's happened in the last year with what's going on in Europe, and the, is it a recession, the inflation? So they're always looking to, how do we cut money on storage yet still get what we need for our applications, workloads, and use cases? So that's definitely the biggest, the first topic. So never met a CIO that was a storage admin or as a fan, but as you point out, they need it. And we've seen needs changing in customer landscapes, especially as the threat landscape has changed so dramatically the last couple of years. Ransomware, you've said it before, I say it too. It's no longer if, it's when, it's how often, it's the frequency. We've got to be able to recover. Backups are being targeted. Talk to me about some of, in that landscape, some of the evolutions of customer challenges and maybe those CIOs going, we've got to make sure that our, our storage data is protected. So it's starting to change. Um, however, historically, with a CIO, and then when they started hiring CISOs or security directors, whatever they had, depending on the company size, it was very much about protecting the edge, okay, if you will, the moat and the wall of the castle. Then it was the network in between, so keep the streets inside the castle clean. Then it was tracking down the bad guy, so if they did get over, the issue is, if I remember correctly, the sheriff of Nottingham never really caught Robin Hood. So the problem is the dwell time where the ransomware malware is hidden on storage could be as much as 200 days. So I think they're starting to realize at the security level, now forget, forget the guys on the storage side, the security guys, the CISO, the CIO, are starting to realize that if you're going to have a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy, you must include storage, and that is new. That, well, that's promising then that that's new. I mean, obviously promising given the, the challenges and the circumstances. So then from a storage perspective, customers that are in this multi-cloud, hybrid cloud environment, you talked about the, the edge cloud on-prem. What are some of the key things from a storage perspective that customers have to achieve these days to be secure as data volumes continue to grow and spread? So what we've done is implement on both primary storage and secondary storage a technology called InfiniSafe. So InfiniSafe has the four legs of the storage cybersecurity stool. So first of all is creating an air gap. In this case, a logical air gap can be local or remote. We create a, an immutable snapshot, which means it can't be changed, it can't be altered, so you can't change it. We have a fenced forensic environment to check out the storage because you don't want to recover. Again, malware and ransomware can, is hidden. So you could be making immutable snapshots of actually malware or ransomware and never know you're doing it. So you right. have to check it out. And then you need to do a rapid recovery. The most important thing if you have an attack is how fast can you be up and going with recovery. So we have actually instituted now a number of cyber storage security guarantees. We will guarantee the SLAs on A, the snapshot is absolutely immutable. So they know that what they're getting is what they were supposed to be getting. And then also we are guaranteeing recovery times. On primary storage, we're guaranteeing recovery of under one minute. We'll make the snapshot available under one minute. And on secondary storage, uh, under 20 minutes. So those are things you got to look for um, from a security perspective. And then the other thing you got to practice. In my world, ransomware, malware, or cyber attack is basically a disaster. So yes. yes, you got the hurricane. Yes, you got the flood. Yes, you got the earthquake. Yes, you got the fire in the building. Yes, you got whatever it may be. But if you don't practice malware, ransomware, recoveries and protection, then it might as well be an, a hurricane or an earthquake. 
It will take your data. It will take your data, and the numbers of customers that pay ransom is pretty high, isn't it? And, and not necessarily able to recover their data, so it's a huge risk. So if you think about it, uh, the government documented that last year, roughly $6 trillion was spent either protecting against ransomware and malware, or paying ransomware attacks. And there's been several uh, famous ones. There was one in Korea, $72 million ransom. It was one of the Korea's largest companies. So, and those are only the ones that make the news. Right. Most of them don't make the news. Right. So talk to me then, speaking of making the news, nobody wants to do that. We, we know every industry is vulnerable to this. Some of the ones that might be more vulnerable, healthcare, government, public sector, education, I think the Los Angeles Unified School District was just hit as well in September. They were. What, talk to me about how Infinidat is helping customers really dial down the risk when the threat actors are becoming more and more sophisticated. Well, there's a couple things. First of all, our InfiniSafe software comes free on our main product. So we have a product called InfiniGuard for secondary storage. Uh, and it comes for free on that. And then our primary storage product is called the InfiniBox. It also comes for free. So they don't have to use it, but we embed it. And then we have reference architectures that we give them, um, our SEs, our solutions architects, and our technical advisors all up to speed on why they should do it, how they should do it. Um, we have a number of customers doing it. You know, we're heavily concentrated on the global Fortune 2000. For example, we publicly announced that 26% of the Fortune 50 use our technology, even though we're a small company. So we go to extra lengths to A, be educated on our own front, our own teams, and then B, make sure they portray that to the end users and our channel partners, but the end users don't pay a dime for the software that does what I just described. It's free, it's included when you get your InfiniBox or your InfiniGuard, it's included at no charge. That's pretty differentiating from a competitive standpoint, I might, I would guess. Uh, it is, and also the guarantees. So for example, on primary storage, Okay, where you'd put your Oracle or put your SAP or your Mongo or your SQL or your highly transactional workloads, right? Your business finance critical. workload, all yep. your business critical stuff. We are the first and only storage company that offers a primary guarantee on cyber storage resilience. And we offer two of them on primary storage. No other vendor offers a guarantee, which we do on primary storage. We're the, the first and right now, as of here we are sitting in the middle of October, we are still the only vendor that offers anything on primary storage from a guaranteed SLA on primary storage for cyber storage resilience. Let's talk about those guarantees. Walk me through what you just announced. There's been a, a very, a lot of uh, productivity at Infinidat in 2022, a lot of things that you've announced, but uncrack some of the things sure, that you're announcing sure. and talk to me specifically about those guarantees and what's in it for me as a customer. It sounds pretty obvious, but I'd love to hear it from you. Okay, so we've done really three different types of guarantees. The first one is we have 100% availability guarantee on our primary storage, and we've actually had that for the last, since 2019. So it's 100% availability, we guarantee no downtime, 100% availability, which for our customer base, being heavily concentrated in the global Fortune 2000, large government enterprises, big universities, and even smaller companies, we do a lot of business with CSPs and MSPs. In fact, at the Flash Memory Summit, our Infinibox SSA All Flash was named the best product for hyperscaler deployment. Hyperscaler basically means cloud service provider. So they need 100% availability, so we have a guarantee on that. Second guarantee we have is a performance guarantee. We'll do an analysis, we look at all their workloads, and then we will guarantee in writing what the performance should be based on which of our products they want to buy, our InfiniBox, our InfiniBox SSA, which is all flash. Then we have, the third one is all about cyber resilience. So we have two on our InfiniBox, our InfiniBox SSA for primary storage, which is a one, the immutability of the snapshot, and immutability means you can't erase the data, right? Can't tamper with it. Second one is on the recovery time, which is under a minute. We just announced in the middle of October that we are doing a similar cyber storage resilience guarantee on our InfiniGuard secondary product, which is designed for backup, recovery, et cetera. We will also offer the immutability of a snapshot guarantee and also one on the recoverability of that data in under 20 minutes. In fact, we just did a demo at our live launch uh, earlier this week, and we demoed 20 petabytes of Veeam backup data recovered in 12 minutes. 12 minutes, 20, 12, 20, 20 petabytes, petabytes in, 12 minutes. in 12 minutes. Yes. That's massive, that's massively differentiating, but that's essential for customers because you know, in terms of backups and protecting the data, it's all about recovery. And, and once they've had the attack, 
It's how fast do you get back online. That, right. That's what happens. If, they've, if they can't stop the attack, can't stop the threat, and it happens, they need to get that back as fast as they can. So we have the speed of recovery on primary storage, the first in the industry, and we have speed on the backup software, and we'll do the same thing for a backup data set recovery as well. Talk to me about the, the what's in it for me for the cloud service providers. They're obviously the ones that you work with are competing with the hyperscalers. How does the guarantees and the differentiators that Infinidat is bringing to market, how do you help those cloud SPs dial up their competitiveness against the big cheeses? Well, what we do is we provide that underlying infrastructure. We, first of all, we only sell things that are petabyte in scale. That's like all we sell. So for example, on our InfiniGuard product, the raw capacity is over four petabytes and the effective capacity, because you do data reduction, is over 85 petabytes on our newest announced product. On our primary storage product, we now can do up to 17 petabytes of effective capacity in a single rack. So the value to the service provider is they can save on watt slots, power and floor, a greener data center, yep. right? Which by the way is not just about environmentals, but guess what, it also translates into operational expense. Exactly, CapEx Opix. With a lot of these very large systems that we offer, you can consolidate multiple products from our competitors. So for example, with one of the competitors, we had a deal that we did last quarter, 18 competitive arrays into one of ours. So talk about saving not just on all of the operational expense, including operational manpower, but actually dramatically on the CapEx. In fact, one of our Fortune 500 customers in the telco space over the last five years have told us on CapEx alone, we've saved them $104 million on CapEx by consolidating smaller technology into our larger systems. And one of the key things we do is everything is automated. So we call it autonomous automation, use AI-based technology. So once you install it, we've got several public references who said, I haven't touched this thing in three or four years. It automatically configures itself, it automatically adjusts to changes in performance and new apps, when I put in, point a new app at it automatically. So in the old days, the storage admin would optimize performance for a new application. We don't do that. We automatically do it and autonomously. The admin doesn't even click a button. We just sense there's new applications and we automate ourselves and configure ourselves without the admin having to do anything. So that's about saving operational expense as well as operational manpower. Absolutely, I was one of the things that was ringing in my ear was workforce productivity and obviously those storage admins being able to, to focus on more strategic projects. Can't believe the CIOs aren't coming around yet, but you said there's, there's a change, there's a wave coming. But if we think about uh, uh, the, the, the what's in it for me as a customer, the positive business outcomes that I'm hearing, lower TCO, your greener IT, which is key. So many customers that we talk to are so focused on sustainability and becoming greener, especially with an on-prem footprint. Um, workforce productivity. Talk about some of the other key business outcomes that you're helping customers achieve and how it helps them to be more competitive. Sure, so we've got a, a couple different things. First of all, storage can't go down. When the storage goes down, everyone gets blamed. Mission when an app goes down, no one really thinks about it. It's always the storage guy's fault. So you want to be 100% available, and that's today's businesses, and I'd actually argue it's been this way for 20 years, are 24 by seven by 365. So that's one thing that we deliver. Second thing is performance. So we have public references talk about their SAP workload that used to take two hours, now takes 20 minutes, okay? We have another customer that was doing SAP queries. They improved their performance three times. Not 3%, not 3%. Three times, so 300% better performance just by using our storage. They didn't touch the SAP, they didn't touch the servers. All they did was to put our storage in there. So performance relates basically to applications, workloads, and use cases, and productivity beyond IT. So think the productivity of supply chain guys, the logistics guys, the shipping guys, the finance guys, right? All these applications that run today's enterprises. So we can automate all that. And then clearly the cyber threat. Yeah. That is a huge issue, and every CIO, is concerned about the cyber threat. And in fact, it was interesting, Fortune Magazine did a survey of CEOs, and this was last May, the number one concern, 66% in that May survey, was cybersecurity, number one concern. So this is not just a CIO thing, this is a CEO thing and a board level thing. I was going to say, it's at, at the board level that the cybersecurity threats are so real, they're so common. No one wants to be the next headline like the Colonial Pipeline right. or the school districts or whatnot, and everybody is at risk. So then, what you're enabling with what you've just announced, the, all the guarantees on the SLAs, the massively 
fast recovery times, which is critical in cyber recovery, obviously resilience is, is key there. Modern data protection, it sounds like to me. How do you define that and, and what are customers looking for with respect to modern cyber resilience versus data protection? Yeah, so we've got normal data protection because we work with all the backup vendors. Our InfiniGuard is what's known as a purpose-built backup appliance. So that allows you to back up at a much faster rate. And we work with all the big back backup vendors, IBM Spectrum Protect. We work with Veritas, Veeam, Commvault, Oracle Arm, anybody who does backup. So that's more about the regular side, the traditional backup. Yeah. But the other part of modern data protection is infusing that with the cyber resilience. Because cyber resilience is a new thing. Yes. Um, from a storage guy perspective, it hasn't been around a long time. Many of our competitors have almost nothing. One or two of our competitors have a pretty robust, but they don't guarantee it the way we guarantee it. So they're pretty good at it, but the fact that we're willing to put our money where our mouth is, we think says we price stand above. Um, and then most of the other guys in the storage industry are just starting to get on the bandwagon of having cyber resilience. So that changes what you do from data protection, what I would call modern data protection is a combination of traditional backup recovery, et cetera, now with this influence and this infusion of cybersecurity cyber resilience into a storage environment. And then of course, we've also happened to add it on primary storage as well. So whether it's primary storage or backup and archive storage, we make sure you have that right cyber resilience to make it, if you will, modern data protection and diff different from what, it, you know, the old backup of your grandfather, father, son, backup and tape, or however you used to do it. We're well beyond that now by adding the cyber resilience aspect. Well, from a cyber resilience perspective, ransomware, malware, cyber attacks, are that's a disaster. Right, but traditional disaster recovery tools aren't really built to be able to pull back that data as quickly as it sounds like Infinidat is able to facilitate. Yeah, so one of the things we do is in our reference architectures and written documentation as well as when we do the training, we tell the customers, you need to practice. Yeah. If you practice when there's a fire, a flood, a hurricane, an earthquake, or whatever is the natural disaster, if you're practicing that, you need to practice malware and ransomware. And because our recovery is so rapid, and the case of our InfiniGuard, our fenced environment to do the testing is actually embedded in it. Several of our competitors, if you want the fenced environment, you have to buy a second product. With us, it's all embedded in the one item. So A, that makes it more effective from a CapEx and OpEx perspective, but it also makes it easier. So we recommend that they do the practice recoveries monthly. Now, whether they do it or not, separate issue, but at least that's what we're recommending and say, you should be doing this on a monthly basis, just like you would practice a disaster, like a hurricane or fire or a flood or an earthquake, you need to be practicing. And I think people are starting to hear it, but they don't still think more about, you know, the flood yeah. or about the, the hurricane. Earthquake. Yeah, that's yes. what they think about. They're not yet thinking about cybersecurity as really a disaster m model, and it is. Absolutely it is. is. Is the theme of cyber resilience, as you said, this is a new concept, a lot of folks are talking about it, applying it differently. Is that going to help dial up those folks just really being much more prepared for that type of cyber disaster? Well, we've made it so it's automated. Once you set up the immutable snapshots, it just does its thing. You don't set have it to and do forget anything. It. We create the logical air map. Once you do it, same thing, set it and forget it. The fence forensic environment, easy to deploy. You do have to just configure it once. And then obviously the recovery is almost instantaneous. It's under a minute guaranteed on primary storage and under 20 minutes. Like I told you when we did our launch uh, this week, we did 20 petabytes of Veeam backup data in 12 minutes. So that's pretty incredible. That's a lot of data uh, to have recovered in 12 minutes. So the more automated we make it, which is what our real forte is, is this autonomous automation and automating as much as possible and make it easy to configure when you do have to configure. That's what differentiates what we do from our perspective. But overall in the storage industry, it's the recognition finally by the CISOs and the CIOs that, wait a second, maybe storage might be an essential part of my corporate cybersecurity strategy, yes. which it has not been historically. But you're seeing that change. Yes, we're starting to see that change. Excellent. So talk to me a little bit before we wrap here about the go-to-market. When can folks get their hands on the updates to InfiniGuard, uh, InfiniSafe, InfiniBox? So all these are available right now. They're available now either through our teams or through our our channel partners globally, we do about 80% of our business globally through the channel, so whether you talk to us or talk to our channel partners, we're there to help, and again, we put our money where our mouth is with those guarantees, make sure we stand behind our products. 
That's awesome. Eric, thank you so much for joining me on the program. Congratulations on the launch. The, the year of productivity just continues for Infinidat is basically what I'm hearing, but you're really going the extra mile for customers to help them ensure that the inevitable cyber attacks, that, they, that their complete storage environment on-prem will be protected and more importantly, recoverable very quickly. We appreciate your insights and your input. Great, absolutely love being on theCUBE. Thank you very much for having us. Of course, it's great to have you back. We appreciate it. For Eric Herzog, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation live from Palo Alto.